This time, let me introduce our next speaker. Our next guest speaker is Miss Philippine Earth Air 2020, an uninspiring humanitarian and environmental lawyer, an advocate for the environment. She is also the founder of DIWA, Uplifting Filipinos Through Sustainable Aid, a nonprofit initiative that seeks to provide livelihood assistance to Filipinos adversely affected by the coronavirus pandemic. She currently works with Greenpeace South Asia as a community work associate for climate justice and energy transition campaign. My classmates, let us welcome Miss Patricia Shirley Santos. All right. Thank you very much for that uh, very gracious introduction. And of course, I would like to thank the Youth Formation Division in partnership with the Department of Education Region 5, uh, the host for today's uh, event. Thank you very much for inviting me to celebrate National Students Day. And of course, marahay na hapon po sa Indugabos. Uh, it's really an honor for me knowing that uh, my region is hosting this event. And um, it's also quite nostalgic for me to be joining you today talking about National Students Day, uh, someone who used to put in so many hours volunteering for the National Students' Rights and Welfare Coalition uh, back when it was one of the most uh, strongest, if I might say, one of the strongest uh, youth empowerment campaigns during my time. So I'm very thankful. And of course, uh, this cannot go by. This opportunity cannot be missed. Uh, without uh, saying hi or giving a shout out uh, to these uh, schools that have been a big part of my formation as a person. So I would like to say hi to the Raga North Central School and of course to St. Agnes Academy. And of course, a quick shout out na rin to Beagle University. Thank you very much to the three schools. If it were not for them, I know I wouldn't be the person that I am today. So... Once again, uh, thank you very much, and uh, it is an honor really to be here with you this afternoon. So I was invited to be part of Speed Talks uh, and asked to share my story uh, with regards to passion and advocacy. And it actually got me really excited because uh, I'm actually at that point of my life where uh, I feel like... Uh, I have something to share, I have something to speak about, and I would like to be able to inspire uh, the younger generation the same way that I was inspired by the generations that came before me. And so let's begin my story. I think uh, they'll be sharing uh, the photos. And that's the first thing. So when we talk about passion and advocacy, I always go back to what I'm very passionate about, no? and that is uh, youth and women empowerment. And I think this is because I grew up in a household wherein I was an only child, and uh, my dad died when I was six months, so it was just uh, me, my mom, and my grandmother on the maternal side. And uh, I think that uh, in that environment, you know, being surrounded by strong, independent women, and having no kids inside, I think that is really what influenced me to be uh, somebody who wanted to advocate for the welfare of women and at the same time, the safety of children. And uh, I think I found my way into doing that by asking, what could I contribute? You know, what could I give to the advocacy that I want to fight for? And I found out very early on that uh, I had what they said, the gift of gab which is why I started using my voice for worthy causes, like in this case, as you can see, the, uh, the advocacy for HIV AIDS, uh, wherein I was uh, actually, I won the honor of becoming the Department of Health's uh, Revocate Ambassador, helping you know, explain to people why it's important to remove the stigma that is usually associated with HIV and the people who are living with it. And uh, for me, it was, uh, I did not know it back then when I first started uh, my love affair with advocacies, uh, but little did I know it would really uh, be a big part of my formation as a person. Uh, why? Because it 
it develops so many parts of my personality. You know, I, I don't think I would be here with you today speaking like this. And I don't think I would be brave enough to be standing there in the streets and rallying for climate action. And I don't think I would be there in the streets again of Malate, Manila, talking to people, people I do not know, strangers to be honest, about the uh, the HIV AIDS advocacy that uh, I was uh, firmly uh, in the mission of sharing with uh, people in our country because uh, I believe that it was something that we had to share. And I also don't think that I would be there you know, in that uh, room talking to uh, different mayors of local government units. Actually, these are mayors of different municipalities and actually just speaking my mind, conversing with them, even sharing much of my own personal stories, just to make a point about the advocacies that uh, I really care about. And that is the magic of being in an advocacy. You, know, you develop yourself as a person, you develop your network of people that you will interact with, that you will care about, and you will share your joys and your sorrows with, and you will actually get the chance to give back to the community that gave so much for you to become the person that you are today. And I think uh, that's what makes me uh, so uh, excited to talk to you about advocacy and passion, because uh, for me, uh, advocacy and passion should uh, really be demonstrated by action. And that, that's why I make it a point to always show other people uh, by action the things I believe in, like me in that case, uh, getting tested for HIV AIDS, and me in this case, uh, going outside uh, in the middle of the pandemic. Uh, <laughs> I know it's dangerous, right? But I was very responsible. But going outside in the middle of the pandemic and doing what I can to help people. In this case, we were helping pe uh, families who lost their homes due to a fire in Barangay 679, Manila. And uh, for me, uh, that is uh, really the center of advocacy. I think it's really about action and your purpose. And uh, moving, fo moving forward, uh, as somebody who grew up in pageants, uh, some of you who know me know that I grew up in pageants, I would always be thankful for uh, the advocacy that I also meet along the way. Uh, the advocacy that I was able to form for Miss Philippines Earth was the Be Better Initiative. And during the pandemic, uh, I have to tell you that it really helped me manage my emotions, manage my energies. It helped me turn the negative into the good. You know, it helped distract me from everything that was going on and thinking about how can I help the environment in the middle of this pandemic? And I think that is my point. <laughs> my point is that uh, advocacies, aside from forming you as a person, providing you with different opportunities. They also help take care of your mental and emotional and physical health by refocusing your energy. I was able to actually figure out the you're going. And uh, for the Be Better Initiative, the environmental focuses that I was able to, to uh, develop and get uh, really grow and innocent. It also helped me as a person because I make sure I was able to create a talent that was uh, deeply connected with environmental advocacy for. And I didn't know how to sing or to dance, so I did a declamation piece. And it won gold. It was a testament to how advocacy really helped me grow as a person. And even after the pageant, it was helping me grow. And it was still helping me, you know, uh, realize my own potential. Because after the pageant, uh, we expanded the Better Initiative into becoming a DIWA. Uh, DIWA is actually a group that aims to provide sustainable aid to Filipinos who lost their jobs because of the pandemic. And uh, the earlier picture was uh, us uh, helping uh, GP drivers who lost their jobs 
uh, actually build uh, urban gardens where they could actually uh, grow their own food. And we were also, uh, you know, uh, raising enough money to give out uh, not even aids or even food packets for uh, families who really needed help during the pandemic. We even raised enough to share uh, go bags. Those are actually go bags. Uh, they're full of uh, essentials that families would need in the case of disasters like floods. And uh, and yeah, we were able to share also uh, vegetable rescues. We're in. We bought the uh, vegetables that farmers were unable to sell and give it to them uh, or distribute it as food aid instead of giving them uh, the usual aid that's not very healthy. And all in all, I'm very proud of Diwa because we raised almost like 700000 and we were able to really uh, find community, you know, find community within ourselves and actually share uh, whatever we can to people. And it's beautiful. And even now, uh, we continue to do that uh, by talking online, raising money still. You can find us on Instagram if you want to help out. And, you know, using my voice has never stopped. Uh, using my voice for advocacy is still there and it's making me feel very fulfilled. So you guys might be wondering, I've been doing this for a long period of time, almost uh, two decades. And I have to say that, yes, it's true. Sometimes you get tired. Sometimes you question why are you doing these things over and over again and seeing so little change in our society. But for me, I always think back to the people. Know, the people of my community, the people who I'm doing it for, like Ate, who was a wife of a jeepney driver who is actually uh, staying in that car, living in that car with all four of her children. Can you imagine five people living there? And also these children who live in Martina, whose houses have been devastated. And you can see all their things outside in the street. And uh, they lost a lot. And yet they're there. And some of them are just smiling back to you because you're there helping, giving back. And for me, that's the why, you know, helping these people. And uh, as I always say you know, in Tagalog, one of the things or the tricks that I do is magtira sa sarili. I always think about my personal goals. Like in this case, I have never forgotten about the, the progression of my legal career. My dream someday to become a lawyer. And my dream to someday uh, do more for my society using that career. I also uh, do not forget to enjoy life uh, in this in the short moments that I get uh, to travel and see the world. Uh, my guilty pleasure. I look around and see so many things to be thankful for, even if there are a lot of things that we get angry about in our society. And uh, I think a very important aspect, you know, in uh, trying to stay focused and trying to do advocacy work despite everything is uh, having people who are there to support you, like somebody, uh, like somebody who who can love you and support you and be behind you, even though sometimes you do crazy things for the advocacy, like volunteer for free. <laughs> And you're doing all these things to not get paid, but he's going to say, a good partner is going to say, go ahead and do what you love. And of course, my parent, no S, <laughs> my single mom who was there behind me every step of the way, supporting me, even though sometimes she could not understand why I cared, why I cried for other people, why I felt strongly for the advocacy. And uh, to all the women who are watching out there, you know, to all the little kids, little women, you know, uh, I just wanted to share that I hope that just not at the same time, but we don't have to choose between a degree and becoming a beauty queen if that's what you want or becoming uh, anything you want to become. And I think this is the last picture. And I think I just wanted to share 
uh, this message because so when I was younger, I was bullied a lot. And today is National Students Day. And when we talk about passion and advocacy, I cannot help but think about a bullying because uh, growing up, uh, I experienced some bad bullying. And uh, I think uh, my message to that little girl got bullied is uh, I hope that you will continue being unapologetically you. No, in a world where people are trying to tell you who you are, I hope that uh, you will allow your life and the blessings that you are granted speak as to the goodness of your heart. And it is tough, uh, you know, to live a life of integrity and principles and to just, you know, uh, keep believing in the causes that you want to fight for. And even if you don't fit in, uh, even if sometimes it's hard to fit in, don't worry, because you were not born to fit in. Maybe you were born to stand out. And in a world filled with uncertainty and sometimes so much fear and hatred, I hope that you will be brave. And better yet, I hope that everybody will be kind. So that's all for me. Thank you very much for listening to my talk. Wow, that was a challenge, you know, speed talking <laughs> uh, through all those pictures. Uh, but for National Students Day, that is my final message to all of you. I hope that you guys will find an advocacy that speaks out to your heart and advocacy that will allow you to grow as a person, to experience different opportunities that will open more opportunities until so on and so forth, until you reach your own personal goals and dreams. And I hope that you do not forget to value your life, to value the people you love, the time you spend with them. And I hope that you choose wisely with a partner that you will spend your life with, uh, who will support you. And uh, above all,